Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Welcome back to Slipstream Autosport. Barely miss uh, running into that wall. It's Aiden. I just set a 226 for qualifying. That is good enough to put me on third place. The guy at the front is way ahead, about a second, 1.2 seconds ahead. So coming around to start this race, this is uh, GT3s at Sebring in the rain, obviously. Uh, starting in third, we kind of get faked out by the leader there. I thought he was going to accelerate then, but then we managed to basically guess what time he will accelerate. So getting ourselves up into second place before the first corner, which feels really good. A lot of stuff happening behind. Let's back it up and take a look at that. This guy had, I mean, there was, uh, he could have seen that guy, but he didn't. Into the wall, guy behind him, there's no way he could have known that. Or this guy, it just, and then all hell breaks loose. Uh, everybody's spinning all over the place, running each other off. So that's like the back 10 cars taken care of. Funnily enough, these like three Porsches all come out without uh, rear or front bumpers. Meanwhile, we are trying to catch the leader. Um, with a qualifying time like that, I didn't really have much hope in my head. And this definitely isn't going to help. Going super wide into, what is that, turn two or turn three. Losing a position to the R8, uh, who is number eight through there. And going to try and settle behind him, cut our losses there, and stop the bleeding. Coming into the very long braking zone, pretty hard to see that one, and this guy in front of me was taking it in the middle of the track, so it made it super hard for me to really see those cones and then still get back over in time to actually hit my braking. Through the super fast, super wet section, there's puddles all over the place. You have to take a pretty weird line here. You can see him ahead taking a dry line that's all the way out to the right. We uh, kind of cut in between there and take like a semi dry line i'm really bad through that corner that we just went through holding it way too tight it is it is drier the tighter you get but it's not really worth it um this is p4 and that gap has kind of grown a little bit so i'm feeling comfortable as far as pressure from behind is i'm really not feeling any more focused on moving forward at this point which is a great place to be and a great thing to focus on Coming around uh, to just about finish out the lap, car number eight goes off into the grass, rejoins safely, and we take a wide line to allow him space. Car is just going off everywhere behind us. I think one of these guys missed his braking marker, and it was probably target fixation from the guys behind, and they kind of all follow each other off, rejoining together at the same time, though, and none of them actually losing a position, which is pretty crazy, or I guess that uh, Ferrari lost a couple. Meanwhile, we are trying to pull away from the guy behind. Uh, he's right on our tail after rejoining, and the car ahead is pretty far, so that at least gives us like good vision. We can see everything. Go a bit deep into sunset, um, managed to pull that back and not lose a position. The guy behind me was taking some super wide lines around sunset, which give him really good exits, but a lot of times that affects your entry pretty heavily. Coming into the first turn, I take a wide entry and a tight line. Guy behind me takes a narrow entry going kind of deep and then pulling it back. So that's going to give me, at least on this lap, um, a bit of room to breathe from the car behind trying to focus on pulling away from him and I think it was almost I saw him go off behind me and it gave me too much breathing room because I started taking turns really slowly horrible through that sector we stayed on the dry line but sometimes it's worth it to take a riskier line just for sheer pace going very deep into the hairpin here he's going to be right back on me losing about half of a second through those first turns but I will get to spray water directly into his face and he kind of moves uh, to the side so we can see after that, which is, I just, I love spraying people with water. And especially when you have no spray in front of you, it's, it's such a good feeling. Very slow into that corner, and we're going to keep a similar gap throughout the rest of this lap by the time we get onto the straight. He's backed up a little bit just so that I'm not spraying directly into his face, which is something I tend to notice a lot. People don't ride super close constantly in the rain. It's just not worth it. You can see just how wide his line is there. I'm um, getting a really good exit, and... It's, it's strange because it does help, but it also sends you very quickly into this last corner so it, or this first corner, so it makes it a bit harder uh, for you to take that correctly. He does do very well there, though, and then he takes a slightly more aggressive line in the center of the track here as I'm taking a safer one to the right. The R8, uh, not the most stable car in the rain, so it was terrifying to me that he was keeping up like this. I'd seen a couple of R8s in a couple of races before this, but never one that running at the front of the pack like this. I was absolutely not driving my best race either. Uh, coming into this turn, and he's right on my tail, looking for a move up the inside, and I'm not sure if, I mean, that was definitely, I sorry, think, sorry. 
he apologizes, but I think that was more on me. It looked like a fairly clean move, and I turned in a little bit early there. I'm not sure. Maybe he would have lost traction in that puddle and kept going, but ends up giving me that position back and backing off. So once again, trying to run from him as fast as we can, getting a tire on the curb, heading onto the straight, which isn't really what you want to do. There's a lot of water on there, and it tends to uh, you tend to lose grip there. Coming into sunset, and he's going to be right back on us as we start. I think this is lap four we are coming onto now. Not much has changed in the way of our gap. Barely avoiding that wall, getting a pretty nice line out. And coming to the first turn, we are going to take a wider entry. He takes a narrower one, but manages to make it work really nicely. So he's staying right on our tail, breaking just at those three cones right there to try and get this stopped and actually make a pretty, pretty good line through there. It wasn't the best, uh, well, it wasn't the best line wise, but minimum speed, I actually took that pretty quick. And sometimes it's worth it to sacrifice your line for speed. You know, sometimes it's faster, especially in the rain. Coming around to the big braking zone uh, before the hairpin, we are once again going to continue to take a pretty safe line here all the way to the right. He's going to be slightly more in the center of the track, and um, our slow line has backed him up a little bit there, so there's not really much he can do. We're playing some pretty heavy defense, spraying him in the face once again, but he is staying very close. You can see him pop into the side there to try and see where he's going for just that one second finally get a decent run out of that corner and that's going to help because I know this is a spot where he likes to put pressure um, so having that breathing room there is pretty nice and we take that corner about fl as flawless as we can as well opening that gap up to maybe 0.7 seconds 0.6 seconds entering into the last few turns before the straight just trying to hit apexes and keep a tight line at this point it's very hard to make an overtake around the outside in the rain, so I'm keeping uh, pretty pretty clean here is my main goal. And I'm not sure how much slipstream really affects the rain. I couldn't see it affecting very much. This is coming on to, I believe this is the last lap. He's taking a narrow entry to the first corner as he has been doing the entire time. I'm taking a wider one and cutting back. So no real changes there. Although this time he is much closer to me as we come into the infield. And it was really nice to have a uh, race in the rain with pressure constantly and somebody, you know, kind of really looking to gain that position. You can see him driving basically the dry line there, just kind of um, not exiting quite as wide. You don't want to get up on that curb, but it definitely yields him a better run all of the way down this straight. It's going to be a hard overtaking opportunity right there, and he's not going to look for it. Uh, more focusing on just keeping connection with us, perhaps looking to get that move done somewhere else. He had been consistently faster than me coming into this right-hander, um, but on this occasion, which is arguably the most important one, that the last lap, he's going to just go a bit wide, a bit too aggressive, hit that puddle and slide out into the dirt. And seeing this in my rear view was an amazing feeling. When, when you're fighting with somebody for that long and they make a mistake like that, especially when it's a mistake that you are intentionally trying to avoid, to avoid. Um, we had been taking the safer line there and it paid off in the end. Uh, we were able to come across the track in P2. P1 was pretty far ahead, and I noticed he ran into the wall here, and you know what I got to do at this point. Mm. Yeah, that felt good. Checking on the results for anybody who wants to see them. Um, yeah, finished second behind Leon. He was very fast, uh, but we were in the third split, so checking out the top split, and Gordy Much, who's actually... Uh, he is a pro driver, and he is amazing. He put in a 2.24.9, which is the fastest lap I have seen. Uh, about a second faster than second place. And he started in P17. I would love to see that race.